Hello. Uh, I'm making this video as a quick overview of a plugin I've been working on for 3ds Max lately, which is a plugin for the uh, Cycles Rendering Engine, and what it will do is let you uh, let you render scenes inside Max using Cycles. So what I'm going to do here is set up just a really a really quick scene, drawing out some uh, some boxes, just so we can just have the basic render here and get an idea of what's going on. So I'll put all those guys there. I'll throw a sphere on here. Um, and this scene is not is not going to really show you much. It's just going to be a really simple render. I'll set a sky color. Um, so the sky is the only light. Uh, there's all just these flat colored materials, no fancy materials. Um, these will just show up in the render as diffuse um, of whatever whatever color they are here. So I will just render this scene quick. I'll go over here and change my renderer to cycles. And we'll see what we get here. Um, so yeah, here's the scene. Uh, all the colors matching what they were in the viewport. And this is just basically some some really simple lighting. Uh, I just wanted to show off that at first, that like it's something. Um, but here to really get into what this plugin does, uh, I will first start off by showing you the material section. So what we got here is just the max material editor. And what I have added over here are all these default uh, cycles materials. So these are all the kinds that uh, ship with cycles. You can use them in the Blender Node Editor um, exactly the same as they are here. So what I will show you is uh, what we have here is the, the diffuse material. It's one of the simplest ones. Um, we can just play with its color here. And the interactive render will, will update, or the interactive preview, rather. And you can just... Uh, fiddle with it until you get whatever whatever color you want. Uh, all these parameters also support maps, so for color and roughness uh, you can put in a single scalar value, or you can put in any of these uh, these default map types supported in Max, like checkers, if you want checker for roughness. So you've got these really, really smooth spots and really rough spots. Um, what else can we do here? Oh, we can also show like, uh, if I want to bring a more colorful map and then set that as the color. Um, and that works. So you have this this logo here on the on the sphere. The other aspect of this is um, so I'll assign this material to just make a sphere here. I'll assign the material. So the uh, these materials in the interactive viewport will will uh, oops I covered it up actually I don't want to do that. Let's move that guy up there. So when I when I update this color it will uh, change material and that will update all all according to the parameters in here and that's not just for diffuse that'll work for all the all the material types uh, the only aspect that doesn't really work in the interactive render right now is uh, texture maps so like if I put this if I put this shape map on here um, the sphere does not look any different I'm working uh, working to correct that but for now uh, for now just solid colors in the interactive preview so what else do I have for you here? Um, I guess not a lot with materials. I just have most of the most of the cycles uh, types in here. I'm still missing a couple. Um, I'm working to add all the ones that that I am missing. Um, but it has everything everything you'd want. Cycles as diffuse, uh, glossy, and then we have mix. So you can mix your things together in that. Also, like everything else, uh, supports a map going into the into the effect slot here. So that will impact how it how it blends those two together according to this map. And uh, the thing about maps, I should mention, um, to get all these all these default max types working in cycles, uh, the way I do that is to just bake them all out to a bitmap. And if you just if you just hook a node up like this, it will use it will use default settings for how it bakes that bitmap out. Or you can add this cycles text map filter node uh, in between your in between your connections here. Um, and what this will do is it will let you play with the exact details. So by default, it will sample to a 512 by 512 bitmap. It uses 8 bits per channel. Um, but you can change around. You can change a super high res if you want a really crisp image, or you can set it to like you can set it to 16 by 16 or something. And you'll notice this preview here uh, it gets incredibly blurry, and you can't even tell what it is anymore. Uh, so we can update that to 32 by 32. And you can see more more detail coming. It's starting to get readable, but it's still pretty pretty dirty. Um, and also, I should say this is um, there's no need for like square textures or power of two textures. This can be whatever you want. 
um, and we'll, they will sample it out to that resolution. What else? That's about all I got there for materials. Um, one other interesting aspect of Cycles and Max here is the smoothing group support. So what I'll do is I'll take this sphere, I'll make another one. Then I'll actually make a make a diffuse and an emission. So you are my diffuse. You are my emission. Nope, I don't want to get rid of that. So set the emission strength at two. Should probably do it. Um, so we'll do this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to position a light so we can get a good a good light on this lower this lower sphere here. So I turn down the the global skylighting, so we can this just this emissive sphere should be casting some light onto the sky, so we can get a good look at the at the edges on it. So let's render that quick and see what it looks like. And yeah, we have good good lighting here. You can see this material. I actually what will will help draw it out even more is if I do a mix, or not even a mix. If I just do a glossy glossy with point. 1.5 roughness should be pretty high. I think that one, I think this will show up better in the render for seeing the edges. Yeah, that'll that'll be, that'll work nice. So we have a, a sphere there getting lit by this other sphere. And what I'm gonna do is draw some, some edges on it to demonstrate smooth groups here. What I can do is select this uh, ring here and I can set it to hard. And now what will happen in the max viewport is you can see all these all these polygons at top are smooth and all these ones down here are smooth, but there is a hard edge between them. So this is still, I'll show you this, it's not a duplicated vertex, there's still only one vertex here that controls the top and bottom, but um, but there, there could be that hard edge between two different sets of smooth, smoothed faces. So I, I draw that on there and you can see how max renders it, and now I can do a cycles render We'll see that cycle similarly will get that hard edge in there like we want. So we have these smooth faces on top, smooth faces on bottom, and a nice hard crease between them. What else? The other thing we can do with this um, is that it uh, can actually be any any number of uh, hard hard edges between faces. So what I can show you here is. I'll go back to hey, polygon mode. So, oop, I want to highlight it like that. So what you can see here is there's a face here, face here, face here. This one is smoothed into these guys. This one is smoothed into these guys up away in this direction, and this is all smoothed down here. So here at this vertex, we have the the junction of three different smooth groups where individually all the faces are smooth, but there's these these edges between them, and just like before, cycles will will render this correctly. So you see we have that still hard edge going all the way around and then this new one pointing up. So this this should correctly render whatever whatever smooth groups you can throw at it. Um, and that is about all I really have for the demonstration here. Um, one last thing is this sample scene I put together, which is just a bunch of uh, monkeys I imported from Blender and applied various materials to them. So we've got a glossy one a glass one and a uh, translucent one, it's just so you can see here the little things on the materials like this, uh, the transparent and the glass look very similar, but the glass does have this extra specular highlight still uh, visible in the viewport, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do what I can to make all the materials look mostly accurate and so you can tell them apart in the viewport. Um, so what I will do here is just uh, I will begin rendering this image, uh, cycles, yes, let's do, let's do 1080. Let's do 1,200 samples and render. So uh, here it will be a better chance to see the uh, progressive render uh, as it uh, as the viewport updates here. You can see it starts out really noisy. It's getting better. I'm not going to make you wait through the whole thing because this is uh, a lot of samples and this render will actually take quite a while. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause recording for now and I will come back. Okay, that render is completed, and here we are with the final image. That's all I have to show for today. I'll likely be putting more uh, more videos up on this channel in the future as I add more features to this. There's still quite a bit it needs. 
before it's really ready for any kind of release. Um, but I will be I will be posting updates as they become available. And that is all for now. Thanks.